Hey everybody. All right. So y'all are keeping me busy today. Busy. All right. But it's all good. Um, that's why I'm here and that's why I want to do this. Um, so today there was a uh, some information. It was a few different you know, journals um, that just came out and they basically talked about, oh, well, there were four cases uh, within the treatment arm of the Pfizer vaccine that caused Bell palsy. And so doesn't Bell's palsy you know, like, isn't if that's a bad thing and they just got it and they just got the Pfizer vaccine, is the vaccine causing Bell's palsy? And should we be alarmed? And the answer is no. The answer is no. So let me explain how that works. And again, I'm going to try to break a lot of this stuff down in a way that makes sense. So something like Bell's palsy is not a rare thing, right? It happens and it happens at a certain frequency within the general public. So if you take a large enough group of people that you want to do in a clinical trial and you take, you know, in this case, you know, 30,000 people, right? And you give 15,000 of them placebo and 15,000 of them, um, you know, uh, the vaccine. And then four of the 15,000 in the vaccine arm develop Bell's palsy. The first thing you have to do is say, uh, is that number in line with the general public? And the answer is yes. So when the and that's why it took the FDA so long to go back and to go through this. And they gave, I think, what was it, a 53, 54 page report breaking down everything about the Pfizer uh, trial. That's why it takes so long. It's just science. OK, it takes a long time and you want FDA to do these things. Now, of course, Trump would rather just like rush it. And he's like, I don't want to be second to the UK. So I want you to go ahead, go ahead hurry up and, and approve it. No. The FDA needs to do their due diligence, go through all of that data and look at every single one of those events and say, this happened. A, is it a significant event? And if it is, is it happening out of proportion to the general population? So in the case of specifically the four people out of 15,000 uh, that got the um, the Pfizer uh, vaccine, the mRNA vaccine that developed Bell's palsy, um, that's very much in line with the rate that it occurs in the general public. You follow 15,000 people for any number of time, no matter what you're doing to them, somebody going to get Bell's palsy, right? <laughs> so, you know, like that's just that's just the way it goes. Now, if you had said, hey, out of these 15,000, 250 developed Bell palsy, that would have been different. That probably would have been a reason that they would have actually stopped the trial if they started noticing that. So in any case, somebody said you don't want Bell's palsy. No, you don't. I mean, I have family members that, you know what I'm saying, that called me and they, they literally FaceTimed me and they were like, hey, Dr. Drummond, like, don't talk, be screenshotting that face I just made. But they were like, yo, cuz, what's going on? Like, my side of my face is not moving. Like, what's happening? And so, you know, it's very easy for me to diagnose Bell's palsy. It's a little bit different from a stroke, okay? So in a stroke, essentially you're gonna continue to have complete function of this of this eye and this whole area up here okay uh in bell's palsy the whole side of the face is going to be drooping so that's something that every doctor needs to know it's a very quick way to diagnose the difference between a stroke and bell's palsy and it just has to do with the way you know whether the problem is happening up here in this side of the brain so it crosses over so it only affects the bottom part but you've got parts of the neurons up here that are still innervating this so this still moves in the case of a stroke, um, but this part is paralyzed. Whereas in Bell's palsy, the problem is here. It's in this nucleus here. And so it affects everything over here on this whole side of the face. So that's just simple neurology. Hopefully your doctor can do that. But anyway, um, so I just wanted to really quickly go on here and just, um, I've literally gotten no less than five text messages and DMs of folks like, am I going to get Bell's palsy if I get this vaccine? Well, honestly, you can get Bell's palsy if you wake up in the morning, okay? It happens. It happens at a very, very large rate, okay? We don't understand it. We think it might have something to do with a viral infection. We give steroids, plus or minus valacyclovir for it, and we keep it moving, okay? Um, most people, it goes away. It does take weeks to maybe months to completely go away, but uh, some people, um, it, it, you know, it, it get complete recovery. Some may have still a little bit of a, of a, of a lower, of a slower uh, movement in that side of the face until it comes back. But in any case, I wanted to just give that information. Uh, I, don't, I didn't want to stay on for too long. Um, I don't really want to go on live with anybody right now, but I did want to give you guys that update. All right. Y'all have a good day.